So in the last video, I took this old toy car and hacked the remote to be able to control everything using a PlayStation controller. And as you can see, there are three things here. There's the car, there's the controller, and then there's this converter board, I guess, that translates using the microcontroller to the remote signals. And then that transmits it to the car. And then it occurred to me, why is this, this converter board even necessary? In, in its original form, the remote board was the controller, and so there was no intermediary. So in this video, I'm going to be taking the microcontroller and putting it in the car and eliminating that intermediary. With that in mind, let's open it up and see how crappy it really is inside. Okay, that really is cheap Chinese crap. So as expected, there are two motors. There's this one that drives the rear wheels, and there's this one in the front that drives the steering. And connected to the drive motor through a set of diodes are the headlights and taillights. And unlike what I expected, they appear to be incandescent light bulbs, and not LEDs, which is kind of an odd choice, considering that light bulbs mean that they have to add special diodes on this board to make sure they only light up in the right direction. And taking a closer look at the steering mechanism, it reveals why I had so much trouble steering it. Since there's only two gears, this steering motor has basically no torque available to move the wheels. That's going to have to change. I'm probably going to end up replacing it with this small servo. And while it looks like it might fit right here, unfortunately the servo itself is too tall to fit under the car body. I'm probably just going to end up sticking it somewhere around here under the PCB and then running a wire down to the steering mechanism. And while I'm in here replacing the internal board with the microcontroller, I had a few more ideas that I figured I'd do while I'm in there. And the first one is to replace the headlights and taillights with these addressable LEDs, and that way they're not going to be strictly on or off or have the color forced upon them by the lens. I might even be able to add turn signals. I also had this small speaker and uh, I2S amplifier lying around, so I thought, how about I add a horn? And I also bought this accelerometer and didn't use it, but then I came up with the idea, if I put this accelerometer inside the car, I'll be able to detect when the car runs into something, and then maybe I could, like, I don't know, have the controller rumble when you crash into something. Certainly an idea. And so here's what I meant when I said I was going to be moving the servo behind it. I've drilled a little hole on the steering sector gear here, and there'll be a wire running to the servo horn. And I've also removed the springing bits that comprise the return to center mechanism so that the servo has total control over where the steering mechanism sits. And while I was in there, I also took the opportunity to replace the drive motor with the one that was actually formerly the steering motor, because I noticed the green motor had a much higher cogging torque than the white motor which means that the white motor will probably run smoother. So here's what I finally settled on for the steering mechanism. The wire in the, uh, the steering sector gear is connected to the horn on the servo, and the servo mount bracket there will be uh, plastic welded to the body. 2,000 years later. Well, getting that all to work was nothing short of an ordeal. And like I anticipated with the servo, getting everything to fit was just as difficult. I had all of the hardware and most of the software put together about three weeks ago, but somehow it didn't work, and I was baffled as to why. What was happening was that when I was powering it via the USB cable plugged into my computer, everything worked perfectly fine. Nothing exploded, the motors all ran at the right speed, the servo didn't freak out, it all worked. But as soon as I unplugged the USB cable and then turned the batteries on, it stopped working. Nothing turned on, not even the little power LED on the microcontroller. I asked around in some electronics forums, and they said, do you have any short circuits anywhere? And I probed all the connections on the bottom of this perf board here, and there were no short circuits. So I couldn't really figure out why. Maybe it was the resistance of the power cables, somebody said. But these were taken out of an old Roomba that was pushing 10 amps through them, so I, I knew it wasn't that. And then I thought, maybe it was the motor driver chip I was using, the L293D, which is, as a design, is old as rocks. And maybe it was connected improperly. But I checked the data sheet, no, it was perfectly fine. 
I'm only using half of the chip. There's two H bridges on there, but I'm only running one motor. So I thought maybe the other half was drawing current because all the input pins were floating. And, but I measured the current with the pins pulled down and with the pins floating and it was absolutely no change. So I knew that wasn't it. And so just yesterday, I took this whole car assembly to a friend of mine who's uh, another electronics nerd like me. And we both played around with the power supply and oscilloscope and it still did the exact same thing that I noticed here on my bench. Until I had the idea to power it by clipping the power supply right onto the battery pack and setting it to the exact same voltage as the batteries and seeing how much current it drew. And that time it worked perfectly and it was only drawing 100 milliamps and I know the batteries can do that. So that just made it even more confusing. But then after poking around it at a little more, I noticed that when I clipped the power supply clips onto the tabs of the battery pack here, they physically moved this green PCB. That was the key part. Because there is exposed wiring on the bottom of this, that means that it could have been shorting on something. And sure enough, putting some electrical tape over the battery context fixed the problem. I feel like an idiot now, but that's what happened. Anyway, once I got that figured out, all I needed to do was figure out in the software what I was going to do to map the controls from the PlayStation controller to the actual actions of the car. While I was at it, I also took the opportunity to make the procedure for connecting the controller to the car a bit more robust. When you first turn it on, the little status LED on the microcontroller starts pulsing blue. And that means that it's looking for the controller. And then you turn the controller on. And, uh, okay, whoops. Forgot I had this controller paired to my phone previously. The way I decided to fix that was by implementing a quick on off triggering pairing mode on the car. So if you turn it off, back on again, and then off and back on again within five seconds, it starts doing the double blink there, which means it's in pairing mode and will connect to any controller instead of the one it was previously paired with. So now, gosh darn it, it wants to pair my phone again. I had to forget the device on my phone. And so now when I turn it on, Uh, so yeah, you have to put it in pairing mode and now they connect and the light turns green to let you know that. So in terms of the controls, uh, the blue pad 32 library calls the right trigger, the throttle. So that's what I made it do. And I also mapped these sticks to the forward and backward. Um, they both do the same thing. And then also the left, right on each stick controls the steering. I'm just going to turn it so it's a bit more clear. Since I took the time to put addressable LEDs in the car, I made the uh, the D-pad control the lights. The up can turn on the headlights, and uh, there's also tail lights back there too, like on the original car. The down control turns on the, uh, I guess you could call them reverse lights. Um, and the one thing that the original car didn't have was that it didn't have turn signals, but now if you press the right thing, it will do the turn signal. And if you press the left thing, it will change the turn signal. And then you press again, it turns it off. You may have noticed there was a speaker in the top of it and it was plugged into an audio amplifier. Um, the only thing there the speaker is used for is uh, the horn, which happens when you press the cross button. I haven't really done anything else with the speaker, but Considering that it's all done via software, I could potentially do anything else, including making like engine noises when the car is running or uh, I don't know what else. If you have ideas of that, you can let me know in the comments section and maybe I can make a follow-up video with some of your ideas. Since the PlayStation controller also has a gyro and accelerometer in it, 
I also added some code that did sensor fusion. And so there is a very basic and not very useful uh, motion controls. If you tip it left and right, it will change the steering. I haven't really used that feature much, mostly because moving the stick is a lot easier. The other thing I implemented, there's really no particular reason for it other than the fact that I decided to use full color RGB LEDs um, in the headlights and taillights, is that you can change the color of the headlights and reverse lights. Um, I used the touchpad on the, uh, the controller for that. You swipe downwards, it increases the saturation of the lights. So you can see they changed to green at this point. You know what, actually I'm gonna turn the lights off so it's a bit more obvious. Okay, that's better. But you can swipe down to increase the saturation and then back up again to make it white again. Then you can swipe left and right to change the hue. It's mildly unresponsive at times, but uh, my favorite would be this blue. And then there's also magenta and red and orange, and yellow and green and just about any color you'd want. Oh, and the accelerometer inside of there, I did actually get the code working for that. It took a while, mostly because I was using a function that expected the gyro to be initialized, and I didn't, so it never returned true and never allowed the code to run. But once I got that figured out, I was actually able to add uh, rumble on the controller when the car runs into something. And it, the car doesn't even have to be actively driving for that to happen. It just, all it does is to, at any point in time, if the, uh, the forward backward acceleration is greater than uh, two Gs, it makes the controller rumble. So I'm gonna run the car into the wall and you should hopefully hear the controller vibrate against the table. And if I, even if I jerk it sharply, it should trigger it too. And the magic of using the BluePad32 library in the microcontroller in there is that I don't even have to be using a PlayStation controller specifically. I could be using an Xbox controller or a Nintendo Switch controller. Uh, of course, I would have to map the uh, light controls to something else. But considering the fact that there are 11 buttons on here, that also exist on Xbox controllers and aren't assigned to anything, that should be pretty easy. The one thing that I wanted to add but couldn't figure out a good way to is to be able to execute a pre-programmed series of moves at a push of a button and maybe also edit that series of moves from the controller. I really don't know any good way to do that. Sure, I could just hard code it in the uh, microcontroller's firmware, but then every time I wanted to change it, I'd have to take the whole thing apart and reprogram the microcontroller. Um, and that's actually quite tedious because uh, I haven't exposed the USB port. I, maybe, maybe I should. But if you want to program something using a PlayStation controller, uh, it's not easy no matter how you do it. So I may not even try to do it that way. If you have any ideas on how to, I can program something using a PlayStation controller, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll try to implement it. I'll put a link to all the code I used on the microcontroller in the description of this video. And uh, I don't have a schematic put together yet, but uh, if I do put one together, it'll also end up in the description. If you're interested in seeing what else I can cram a PlayStation controller into, uh, you can subscribe to my channel. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff upcoming that is probably pretty interesting to the right audience. And a big thank you to everyone who already did subscribe. I'm now at 105 subscribers, which is a big milestone. Or rather, passing 100 subscribers would be more likely a milestone, but uh, another five doesn't hurt. That being said, I'll stop talking now because this is the end of the video.